Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D. Uh, real quick, wanted to talk about uh, the other night I rewatched uh, Austin versus Rock WrestleMania 17, and uh, just I didn't watch, I didn't rewatch the whole pay per view. I just, just specifically that match, and I watched it because I had been listening to some Jim Ross shoot interviews, and one of the recent kind of clips I listened to, he he was talking about. Uh, WrestleMania 17 and he was asked if if he thought that was maybe the peak of the wrestling business and all that so anyways that that whole conversation is what kind of uh, inspired me to to revisit that match and watching that match now makes me want to go back and watch uh, wrestle their WrestleMania 15 match because I kind of feel like there was a time when I thought that that WrestleMania 15 match was better than the 17 match, but now I'm not so sure. I, I want to go back and rewatch uh, 15. I was kind of thinking, you know, at what point did the whole kicking out of a person's finisher uh, become a such a regular thing? And of course, if you saw this match, this WrestleMania 17 match with with Rock and Austin, you know that 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 happens multiple times within the match and it doesn't necessarily hurt this match because it really kind of both of these guys were just at an incredible level within the business where it was just like it fit for this match these two titans that would you know be able to muster the strength to kick out of each other's finishers and and all that type of stuff i get it for this match but it does seem like in general because i remember a time when i first started watching wrestling and it's not like i started back in the you know the 80s and stuff I, I started regularly watching in the in the middle to the late 90s but i did go back and re-watch old 80s stuff but when i first started watching once a guy got hit with the finisher that was it there wasn't really it wasn't very often that you saw somebody kick out of somebody's finisher particularly a superstar's finisher like a well-known like this is supposed to end the match type of finisher you didn't see that happen a lot and then at some point it started to slowly happen more and more and i kind of get it because from a storytelling perspective and raising the stakes perspective uh that it, that's gonna end up you're gonna end up, end up having to do that because when you really play out scenarios and stuff of how matches can go and things like that there is going to come a point where it's like if you really want to raise the stakes somebody's going to have to kick out of somebody's finisher and then the thing about that is how does that affect continuity going forward because you know I, if somebody can kick out of like two two choke slams or you know two of the undertaker's choke slams or something like that then going forward is it supposed to be believable that when that guy gets hit with one choke slam, he's supposed to stay down? Is it believable when that happens when we know hey, this dude kicked out of two or three of those a few months ago or whatever? So that was always kind of my thing when that started happening. It was like, OK, this is going to throw off the balance of like how you scale and how you rate the quote unquote effectiveness of people's finishers and stuff. Um, you know, the whole kind of the no sell you know there was a time when if you no sell somebody's finisher you probably have problems backstage and, and stuff like that like people took that a very negative way and then now the no selling or the kind of softening of people's finishers finishers having that built into the actual storylines of different matches i don't know it's a to me it's a weird thing and that's this wrestlemania 17 match made me think about that a little bit just kind of like yeah at some point that started happening a lot more often where people's finishers weren't really finishers anymore they weren't actually finishing the match with um with finishers people now can kick out of f5s people kick out of stunners and the rock bottom and, and uh sweet chin music and, and all that type of stuff and i think Shawn michaels might have kicked out of some tombstones at those those wrestlemania matches i remember undertaker having a real hard time kind of putting michaels away in uh, some of those matches so and that's a weird thing because i typically like finishers to maintain their their power like their effectiveness like when you hit the finisher it's supposed to mean something uh what is kind of uh, quote unquote acceptable is somebody hits the finisher 
and then there's a delay the ref is knocked out so the person hits the finisher but then the person that got hit with the move has like a certain level of time where it's believable that okay yeah they got hit with the tombstone but they just laid there for a minute so now they it's believable for them to kick out because they had all that time to to recover and everything so and that makes sense from just a you know tr trying to make the story as uh, believable as possible and maintain as much continuity as possible in terms of people's moves and the effectiveness so that's it kind of rambled about that but i watched rewatched this match and figured i would kind of talk about that like at what point you know when did that start happening as much as it did and is that a good or bad thing because i mean there was a time when simple moves like just a regular pile driver could be a finisher and um a lot there's a lot of holds that back in the 80s were considered finishers and then nowadays it's a very like seemed like a mundane almost boring move uh randy savage his uh, elbow drop his flying elbow drop that that's a finisher right but Shawn michaels uses the flying elbow drop simply as a setup move it's not an actual finisher so it's a it's an interesting thing how as time progressed how they changed the whole effectiveness of the finishing move so that is it i'll catch you guys on the next go round